If you ever lived in the UK, you probably already paid reparations in your lifetime. But not reparations to the descendants of enslaved people, reparations to the families of slave owners. Now this story is one of the most shocking things I've found out since I started making TikToks. And ironically enough, there's a growing sentiment to blame the country's problems on recent migrants instead of looking at the elite British families that have been taking the country's wealth for centuries. And in this video, I have all of the receipts. So in 2018, the UK Treasury's Twitter account put out a post that said surprising hashtag Friday fact. The tweet told UK citizens that millions of you helped end the slave trade through your taxes. It said that Britain used 20 million pounds to buy freedom for all slaves in the empire and that living British citizens helped to pay to end the slave trade. But as many people pointed out before the tweet was quickly deleted, this was a really weird way to frame a more shocking reality. Britain borrowed 20 million pounds, which is estimated to be the modern equivalent of 17 billion pounds with a B to pay slave owners after slavery was abolished. This means British taxpayers were compensating slave owners and their descendants until 2015 when the debt was finally paid off. In the words of a man mentioned in the Guardian article about this, So basically, my father and his children and grandchildren have been paying taxes to compensate those who enslaved our ancestors, and you want me to be proud of that fact? Are you fucking insane? And better yet, the University College of London did the Lord's work by compiling a list of 46,000 individuals and groups who received government payouts related to the abolition of slavery. And this included powerful and wealthy British elites like the family of David Cameron, and he was the conservative prime minister who had the audacity to go to Jamaica and say no to reparations while telling them, and I quote, that they should move on from the painful legacy of slavery. But the list also included everyday middle to upper middle class British families who some of whom I assume are the type of people to sit around the dinner table and scoff at the idea of giving black people reparations because no one today was enslaved. And some of these records clearly show the investments made with that money and how those assets have been passed down to the living descendants of these slave owners who are the heirs of their family's estate. And I've been doing this type of work for a long time and I know white supremacist logic is full of hypocrisy but something about this fact was just almost too much for me. Like the type of reactions that I got for suggesting that black descendants of slavery get reparations even though it's our families who suffered and did all the work, meanwhile people were paying white slave owners reparations until 2015 just felt so bizarre and almost unreal. And apparently I'm not the only one who felt this way because USA Today had to do a fact check of the situation. And what was their verdict? That it was 100% true. And this is something we only know because of a slip up on Twitter. Who knows what else is out there to uncover? I guess it's going to be a long year. Once again, I'll gauge interest for a part five in the comments, so let me know if you want that. And until then, follow for more.